home, mister. Everything in that case. Things it could have been a whole lot worse. Who did it? Guy hit the drugstore. Probably the guy we've been looking for. I thought I had him cold. He threw down a 45. I went to pick it up. He pulled a surprise. Talk's over, miss. He needs a lot more care than we can give him in this alley. I'll be around in the morning. Talk to you again, officer. Don't go running off on me, you hear? Did he get away with? Hey, what was he after? Hard drugs, morphine, uh, the usual. How's he, Christy? I guess he's gonna be okay. This the same M.O. as the other drugstore robberies? No, sir, this one's different. This time, our friend shot up a police officer. We kind of frown on that. because you haven't seen the newspaper. What paper? Well, it seems your friend on the Times decided to do a piece on you on how women are revolutionizing police work. God did an article on me? Where is it? Don't look at me. It's a shooting offense to be caught with it on you. Who's doing the shooting? Boss. Oh, come on now. Lieutenant Reardon's a teddy bear. Not Reardon. Ryan, the new captain. And I'd describe him more as a um, grizzly. New captain? Captain Arthur L. Ryan, I'm your new commander. I come to you not as a taskmaster, but a member of a team. And one thing, one thing only, I want you to carry with you as you pursue the mandate of the people of Los Angeles. Now, the detective squad is the backbone. Is the backbone of the police department. Of the police department. So, you are the cornerstones, the foundations, the anchors, 
pillars. The pillars. And while I am running this department, there will be no heroes, no all-stars, no peacocks taking bows or stealing headlines. We will all go by the book. The same book. Officers who seek personal publicity are not team players. They are hot shots whose judgment cannot be counted on to serve the common good. No excuse can justify compromising the principles upon which I lead. Now, as team players, some of you will be called upon to serve on the starting lineup, while others must content themselves to remain on the sidelines awaiting their opportunity to serve. Gallagher, you've been with me before. As a matter of fact, twice before, if memory serves me right. Yes, sir. It serves you right. I mean, you're right, sir, that I've been under you twice before. Not under me, with me. Team. Ah, that's right, sir. A team. As I recall, things didn't quite work out. Refresh my memory. Well, sir, um, as it came down to me, it was somebody's notion that I could best serve the team by uh, playing for the other side. But I am not a quitter, sir. I believe everyone can make a contribution, regardless how small. Hmm. Well, if you're sincere in that attitude, maybe things will work out better this time. Let's consider this a fresh start. Thank you, sir. As a matter of fact, the case came in this morning that I think you... Come in. If I'm interrupting, sir, I can... Stay. I was just outlining a case which uh, might be an ideal opportunity to get to know each other's work. Well, I'm happy to hear I won't be spending the entire game on the sidelines. Investigator Love, everybody makes a contribution, no matter how small. You're going to be in charge on this one. The Gallagher here will be with you. You see, I'm, I'm already familiar with his work. Well, thank you, sir, but I think you should know I'm already on a case, the drugstore bandit, and I have several ideas. My dear, even Christy Love, the greatest innovation in police work since the two-way radio, couldn't possibly handle two cases at the same time. The two-way radio? How about that? <laughs> you know, Doug Wilson down at the Times is kind of an old friend. He's got the greatest sense of humor. Of course, that doesn't sound like his best stuff. We'll get right on this, sir, believe me. Give it our best. First string. It's going right into action. <laughs> All right, people, let's be dispersing. This isn't a parade. Come on, people, let's break it up. Your case, Officer Love. I'll try not to let the department down. Officer Russell? I'm Russell. Love, headquarters. Headquarters? Investigator Love's in charge here. Where are all the real cops? Working on real cases, I guess. Officer, you reported your motorcycle stolen? Temporarily missing. Well, maybe you could tell us what you know about its disappearance. It's gone. Well, that doesn't give us much to go on. It's all I know. Well, what kind of motorcycle is it we're looking for? I ride a hog. A hog? Harley 74 1200 CC four stroker. Any distinguishing markings? Are you serious? Where did they find you two? I'm on the drill team. What does that mean? No windshield. Uh huh. 
When did you first suspect that you and your motorcycle had been separated? I stopped in at Nate's for some coffee. And when I came out, my motorcycle was gone. You stop here every morning? For two years, I've been parking my motorcycle right there. Here? Right there. Yeah, well, it's gone, all right. I don't need any woman to find my motorcycle. Now, take it easy, Russell. Don't bark at us. You're the one who lost his Harley. All units in the vicinity of 8th and Alvarado and 7A21. Officer needs help. Shots fired. 7A21, your call is code 3. That's us. What about my motorcycle? We'll be in touch! <laughs> been hitting the drugstores. Cover me, Christy. Let's go. Christy, you're hurt. Just my pride. 
Listen, the shoulder's nothing more than a scratch, guys. I don't need that stretcher, huh? Thanks. All right, come on, people. Back off. Give us some room here. Hey, this another brush with a drugstore bandit officer? I'll answer all your questions later, okay? Was it the same guy who tried to kill the other officer? Nobody said anybody tried to kill anybody. You're saying that he didn't try to kill you, officer? I'm not saying anything. Please. Look, you'll get a, you'll get a statement later, please. How does she do it? Two additions, one day. Drugstore bandit eludes petticoat posse. Beautiful, huh? Lull on a rooftop goes down defending partner. Hmm? Uh, that was my fault, Captain. You'll have no credit grabbing around here. There's room on my list for the both of you. Now, did she or did she not tell those reporters the gunman's a good guy who shoots the weapons out of victims' hands and rides off into the sunset? Uh, no, that's not exactly what she said, sir. But uh, she does seem to have a theory on the assailant. Some female fantasy. Yeah, uh, seems to think the drugstore bandit isn't all bad. Neither was Jack the Ripper. But we don't grade on a curb around here. What's the last word? Christy gonna be all right? Yeah, I, I think so. They, they were waiting for the x-rays when I left. I just can't buy it as being coincidence that two police officers are cut down by an Army 45 and neither man is in serious condition. I point out, sir, that it's awfully hard not to kill a man with that particular weapon. Christy, I think your delirium of just being alive is affecting your judgment. Now, if it wasn't for the fact that you just took a bullet in the line of duty, I'd have you run up on charges for reeling off your maternal hunches to the papers. Sir, I know for a fact this man had me dead center in his sights and he could have very well blown a hole clear through me. No, he didn't. Captain, Investigator Love received a superficial wound in the deltoid muscle. Now, it may very well have been a coincidence, but it is one of the very few places that she could have been injured without suffering permanent disabilities. So we're to assume that this man is a whiz with an Army 45, and what does that prove? In case you haven't heard, Investigator Love, being a top gun in town no longer puts the law in your pocket. No, sir, but knowing what he is will certainly help us find out who he is. I assume, sir, that you've been checking military records since an Army 45 turned up in the case? Why, thank you for your confidence in the department, Investigator Love. Yes, yes, we have. Well, then, sir, if we start checking for a champion marksman with a medical problem, I mean, a man who keeps knocking over pharmacies for drugs must have an overwhelming drive that keeps... Ever heard of the profit motive? Well, now, Captain, I don't think... And you shouldn't. I mean, you've been through a uh, serious ordeal. So we're going to give you a little rest from all those complex cases. Now, when you feel better, you go back to work. Looking for that motorcycle. How was it? Well, anything requiring the use of her deltoid muscle is uh, quite out of the picture for a while. However, she'll continue to be able to lead her usual semi-useful life. Mr. Wilson? I heard on the radio, Christy, how bad is it? Well, the doc says the bullet didn't hit anything vital. Well, I'm sure we're all glad to hear that. What's the matter with Captain Ryan? Oh, that's kind of a long story, Doug. I'll tell you about it later. I was in hopes you'd say something flattering about the column I did on. I thought you'd be pleased to know it was the talk of the whole town. Uh, yeah, well, they talk quite a bit about it down at headquarters, too. I'm not sure I like the sound of that. Well, Doug, when you start making too much of a lady policeman in a sea of men, it kind of tends to rock the boat. Investigator Love, you are going to need rest. Now, you take one of these when you get home. It'll help you get right to sleep. I'll see that she follows orders, Doctor. Thanks, Doc. Investigator Love, nothing too physical for a while. You feel up to being invited to dinner, Kristen? Like the doctor said, you will need to regain strength. Yeah, well, what is it I'm gonna need all this strength for? Well, for more newspaper headlines, of course. Same M.O.? Same M.O., except this time we may have gotten a break. Yeah. Lab boys came up with the print. 
Yeah, Captain, apparently uh, he sat on this railing and waited for the day crew to get off of this pharmacy. We found a print on the railing and another one on an empty cigarette package. Enough to make him? I don't know, Captain. The prints were distorted like the man may have uh, scar tissue on his hands. Scar tissue? Yeah, I saw a lot of it in the service. But if he's been reprinted since his injury, I'll have a make on him in a few hours. All right. You okay, Christy? Yeah, come on in, Pete. Uh, I'm sorry I overslept. Must have been that medicine the doc gave me. How's the shoulder? I'll tell you the truth, it's kind of sore. Want some coffee? Yeah. What's up? The lab boys came through and picked up a print outside the drugstore. Enough for him to run a make? It's not conclusive, but we have a possible suspect. I thought you might be interested. He's a veteran. Medical history of narcotic addiction as a result of combat injury. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Go where? To look for that motorcycle. Now, do you know where they're going to corner the suspect? Hollywood, uh, somewhere in the 5,000 area of Sunset. The dispatcher will have it. Well, then, let's go look for that motorcycle in the 5,000 area of Sunset. Come on, Pete. I asked him not to let any more cars park out here, huh? Be sure to keep those people back. Uh, you know, the uh, chief may not understand the coincidence of us being in this particular neighborhood at this particular time. Well, there won't be anything to misunderstand when I explain that it isn't a coincidence. Uh-huh. Pete, why don't you stay here and keep an eye on the car? With two of us around, the chief might think we're ganging up on him. Good idea, Christy. Put two men around the back, one on the roof. Yes, sir. All right. Good morning, Chief. Heard we made some progress on the drugstore case. What are you doing here? I'm looking for a lost motorcycle, amongst other things. Hmm. Haven't seen one, have you? No, but there may be a lost cause wandering around. No. Complaint says one police department motorcycle. Of course you know the department better than I, sir. All right, Christy, to what do we owe this honor? Well, I thought you might need my help in identifying the suspect. And just how do you intend to identify him? Now, you told me you didn't get a very close look at him. You can tell a lot without seeing a face. For instance, no two men move just alike. Something you picked up at the academy. Noah learned that in dad school. Well, it might come in handy here. We don't have much to lose. Uh, Captain, the men are in position. All right. Caruso, you cover us. Officer Love and I are going up. Now, you ball this up. You'll never know what hit you. Appreciate your confidence, Chief. Arrest. For? Suspicion of robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. You won't need those. Is he here? No. Do you mind if we look around? I do have a warrant. Why don't you come in and look around? Your husband owned a 45 caliber army sidearm? Now, Mrs. Norton, eventually we'll be able to check that out. A special match set. He was a national champion. I'll check the rest of the place. You wouldn't be investigator Love. Christy Love? That's right. Why? I read about you in the papers. Uh, yeah, well, I've been there. Kind of sorry to say. 
You were wounded? Not too badly. I'm glad. Because you knew it was your husband? Because I don't like to see people suffer. I appreciate the thought, Mrs. Norton. This Arnold? Oh, yes. It's taken right after his discharge. He's a fine-looking man. Mrs. Norton, when did you last see your husband? I, I don't remember. Please, Mrs. Norton. He's been away for days. He's away on business. Now, I can't believe you really think you're going to help him by keeping him on the run. Well, you're saying he's running. I'm not. And you're also saying that Arnold couldn't use any help. We do want to help, you know. How could you help? How could you? No one even begins to understand the problem. We know that he has spent considerable time in a military hospital. Oh, yes. They patched him up just fine. Only now those patches are killing him. Do you have any idea how many boys come out of hospitals addicted to narcotics? Arnold has been home for two years. In that time, we have lost our home, our car, our savings. Arnold's career? I don't know. There isn't much left. He's alive. That means he can still be helped. If we find him before he kills somebody, a force is an officer to kill him. Well, there's only one thing wrong with what you're saying. What is that? I don't think Arnold cares whether you kill him or not. Because he figures he's dead anyway. Go there from this way and this way. That way you got everything covered. Do you understand what I mean? Well, we have the right man? We don't have anyone yet. Yeah, I want this building under 24-hour surveillance. Yes, sir. And don't say it. Don't say what? That you were right. Well, the lab boys found the fingerprints, sir. Checking the military records just might have taken a little longer. No. No, you were right on the target. All right, so now I owe you one. Well, it's all in the line of duty, sir. Still, I've decided to try out that pet theory of yours. Pet theory? Where you can tell a lot about a person by the way he moves. And now, does that work for she's as well as he's? Um... Because I would like to try and judge which way a police officer is going to be promoted by the way he moves. Which way? Up or down. Of course, I, uh... I trust that the next time we meet, you will have solved the baffling disappearance of Officer Russell's motorcycle. Uh, yes, sir. You got in on the whole thing. Congratulations. I've never seen the chief back down like that before. He's a stubborn man. It's all in how you handle a man, Pete. And listen, I had a pretty rough time persuading him to leave two valuable officers like us to look for that policeman's motorcycle. Christy, he didn't. Right. Back, back on, on the, the chopper, chopper patrol. patrol. Christine, one thing. 
So far, the captain's been on the good-natured side. Well, it hasn't been so bad, considering. Yeah, well, it can get a lot worse. Now, you take my advice. You go right to your room, you lock the door, and you go to bed. Neither one of us can afford any more headlines, okay? You got my word, Pete. I won't be on tomorrow's front page. I've been trying. You want to get back into his good graces? Anything short of swimming the Los Angeles River. I think I might be able to help you. Get in. Forgive me if I seem a little bit surprised. Mr. Wilson here keeps a good secret. She's been trying to get in touch with you since this afternoon, Christy. I was afraid to leave any kind of message at police headquarters. I don't want them to know I've contacted you. It's you I'm willing to put my trust in. I read Mr. Wilson's column, and I thought it suggested a kind of personal relationship between you, so... I decided I'd take a chance on contacting you through him. Well, I'm sorry you had to go to so much trouble. It won't be too much trouble if you'll help me. What would you have me do, Mrs. Norton? To save my husband's life. You have my undivided attention. I read what you said to those reporters about the man who shot you. Do you still believe that? Well, it was just a feeling. But we looked at each other square in the face. I know he could have killed me. But he didn't. No. He couldn't. My husband is a wonderful man. He's sick. But he couldn't kill. Let's say I'm willing to believe that, Mrs. Norton. I think I can convince Arnold to give himself up. It's his only chance. It has to be to you. What makes you think you'll trust me? What you said in the papers. You see, you believed in him. And he'll believe in you. Would you be willing to take me to him? No, I can't do that. I don't know where he is, but... He's supposed to call me tomorrow morning at a pay station. Mrs. Norton, there are a lot of policemen out looking for your husband, and they have military photographs to go on. Now, I'm willing to meet him wherever he says, but my advice is that it be soon. Well... Thank you. I knew I could depend on you. She's just that kind of a lady. I'll call Mr. Wilson if... Arnold will agree to a meeting place. I'll be waiting. We won't forget this. She's an awfully nice kid. I hope you can do something for her. Yeah, well, I'd feel a whole lot better if I already had her husband in custody. She's right about one thing, though, Doug. The department isn't about to take any chances with a man who's already shot two policemen. I can't say as I blame him. Well, I thought we'd have heard by now. There's no guarantee she'll be able to talk him into it. Well, I just hope that if she does, the chief will let me meet him. You think it's wise to tell him? I don't have any choice. The trouble is, the chief may insist that I go in with help, and Norton's liable to set up at least one false meeting place just to see who I show up with. Well, you have to do what you think is best, Krista. Agreed. I'll call you in an hour. Okay. 
You know, that's the fourth call you made this morning. You're either in love or you're up to something. Pete, how reasonable is our new chief? Mm, I don't think I like the drift of that question. Unit 411, code 507, Baldwin Park. A 507 in Baldwin Park? Let's go. Now look, either you pay up or you leave. Are you crazy, man? This is a public park, and there ain't nothing you can do to make us leave. Oh, yeah? Well, he ain't jumping until everybody pays up. Are you kidding? Half these people are in here free. Hey. Uh-oh. If Willie don't jump quick, you're gonna have to give back what money you got. where we win another popularity contest. Yeah, whatever happens, let's agree not to let this develop into anything more than a riot. 12 17 Hello, fellas. Hello, lady. Uh, investigator. Investigator, lady. Somebody putting on some kind of show? The greatest show on Earth. Has a nice ring to it. Go on. Tell him about Willie and his mean machine. Willie? Well, he's gonna jump over the lake for all these good folks. Hey, well, that could be dangerous. Just who is it exactly that's putting on this show? Well, there's me and my brother Willie. Yes. That's kind of it. Uh, this Willie, he your big brother? No, he's his little brother. You know, it would take an awfully big bike and a very experienced rider to make that jump. And not to mention a few assorted permits. Oh, well, the bike is big enough. It's a Harley 74, 1200 cc, four stroke. Uh-huh. Well, guys, I'm afraid we're gonna have to look into this. You're too late. Here comes Willie. I see it, but I don't believe it. Mistake, Officer Russell. Is that your motorcycle? Well, everything was painted over. I couldn't identify it. That's it. Terrific. We'll run it into the garage and the guys will fix it up for you. No, no, no. It's too embarrassing. I can't let you take my hog in looking like that. Well, it's all right with me, but you better call in and get permission to switch bikes. I'll have to... I'll have to call my captain at home, I guess. Through with that bike, that's for sure. Um, uh, I get the phone first. I'll be inside grabbing a cup of coffee if you need me. Christy? I got hung up a bit. How we doing? We're doing fine. Joan's here. Her husband agreed to meet you at a movie house near third and uh, hold on. Slow down a bit. All right, four o'clock, I got it. That doesn't leave me much time to get there. He's gonna wait till you've gone inside to make sure you're alone. Well, that doesn't sound like a good idea. I mean, his standing outside that movie house in broad daylight it isn't my idea of safe. No choice, that's the way he wants it. All right, but I gotta run if I'm gonna make it on time. Tell Mrs. Norton not to worry. Okay. If anyone can bring this off, it's Christy. I've gotta call the captain. Well, you won't reach him, uh, he's busy. Proceed to 500 block of Los Feliz and perimeter of Griffith Park. Arnold Norton's been spotted. Probably corner him in the park. 
Oh, Petey was on his way to meet me. Kristen, how do you do it? It's the only way to take him alive. If they start closing in on him in that park, he's gonna lose his life. A man starts shooting at people deserves whatever he gets. I'm not worried so much about Norton now. I'm thinking about all those officers who are liable to get themselves in his way. Pete, they've never been up against a man who can shoot as good as he can. I've got to get to him first. Christy! Christy, that's a big park! The chances of you finding him first are nil! I'm coming with you, Christy! Pete, you'll never keep up with me in traffic. Now, you stay here and explain the emergency to Officer Russell. What are you doing on a motorcycle? I'll tell you later. Which way did Norton go? Oh, we lost him in the park. He went west. But we'll get him. A few more minutes and every one of these entrances will be buttoned up. Thanks, Ed. Christy, wait! Norton was parked to this point. Did he try to stop him? He couldn't get close enough. Norton had a screen of people between him. Valencia lost him just inside the park. I right, keep those units rolling in. We're going to need all the help we can get. Now, hold it. You better warn them. Norton is not only armed, but he is a dead shot. Any chances with him? I don't want to lose a man. Are you alone? Yes, sir. Where's Investigator Love? I was just going to ask if you'd seen her. Why would I have seen her? She's supposed to be with you looking for a motorcycle. Oh, that we found, sir. <laughs> Congratulations. You know, that's just fine. I get that female out of my hair for a whole day, and I get a case solved. Did you return the cycle to the patrolman? Uh, not exactly, sir. I mean, we did return it, but then, well, Christy, he, uh... Captain, look. No. Oh, this is a bad dream. Are we gonna have her stop, sir? Just how do you propose to do that?
Joan, I'd help, but you don't make it easy. You know, so, so sometimes a man is just beyond help. Come on, drop the gun. Please don't make me do it. You pointed that at me once before. Go ahead, shoot. Fire first, or I will. You couldn't kill before. I don't think you want to do that now. Drugstore bandit arrested without so much as firing a single shot or endangering the 150 officers pouring into the park. Which otherwise could have been considered a wholesale holocaust. Public. You're the main event. Oh. I was just reading about your work in the park. Oh, I want you to know, sir. I want you to know, Christy, that it's inevitable that after every game, individuals may appear to be responsible for a team victory. But in reality, the team makes the hero. And still, there are qualities in some of us that seem to put us at the right place at the right time. Now, these qualities can be interpreted as grandstanding or insubordination. Well, I prefer to interpret them as <laughs> good police work. <laughs> well, you get the game ball this week, Christy. Uh, now, would the rest of you please try? <laughs> good work, Christy. Watch it, guys. Watch it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, sir. You know, you did quite well on your last assignment. I have another one for you. Not another motorcycle case. No. Now, this one I think you'll find to be more, uh, shall we say, unusual. <laughs>